I'm a 17 year old male. My sister's 21 and was at work. I was home alone as my family stayed in their cabin a few kilometres away. I'm used to staying home alone as this exact scenario is very common in the summertime, especially while I'm working and can't travel from the cabin and back. I'm not usually jumpy or afraid while home alone anymore. I'm used to the old creaks and settling noises of our old house. I was especially comforted by the fact that my sister's dog was also in the house with me that night and most noises could be attributed to him and if anything were to happen he would act as a guard dog of sorts and alert me to anything odd. At the same time, however, he is the type of dog to bark at any noise or person walking past the door or windows so I'm used to hearing him bark or growl at night. Even so, this past Friday the sound of his barks at nearly 12am were of no concern to me. Despite my comfort with staying home alone, I am still terrified over the premise of a break-in or some other uninvited human interaction at midnight. I let him bark for a few seconds, telling myself it was just someone walking past our glass door in the adjacent alleyway, and he would quiet down once they passed. Needless to say, that's not what happened. He kept barking and growling for a few moments too long, and I finally got out of bed. Now, I sleep in the basement and I walked upstairs to check it out. As I suspected, he was standing alert at the glass door. I was comforted for a moment until I walked over, ready to close the curtains and go back to sleep. And I saw the door open about two or three inches. I froze. I had let Bosco, the dog, out earlier that night, but I know I closed the door. I've never left this door open. I'm a paranoid person with bad anxiety, especially concerning break-ins and the like. So I would never, especially home alone, forget to close the door. I'm 100% certain. But at the time, I didn't let myself think about these facts or even acknowledge that I could not have left the door open because I knew it would send me into a spiral, possibly even an anxiety attack. I closed and locked the door, double checking that it was certainly locked. Using the flashlight on my phone, all the lights in the house were off. I looked around the entire second floor of my three-storey house, including closets and other reasonable hiding spots, just to put my mind at ease. And upon finding nothing, I went back downstairs to my room. As I was down there, trying to push away the fear, I could hear Bosco walking around on the floor that doubles as my bedroom roof. I thought I was overthinking it when it started to sound like human footsteps, accompanied by Bosco's footsteps. He walks around for about 10 minutes before I put in my earphones and talk myself down until I can fall asleep. At 2am that same night, my sister comes home from work. I woke up for a few minutes before this to Bosco in the basement, which he never does. There's even a gate to stop him from getting to the basement. He was whining at my bedroom door. When I got up to let him out, my sister walked in and we let him out the front door rather than the glass patio, letting him in the same way. We talked for a while before I went back downstairs and my sister went to the bathroom. I forgot about the door, busy with work for the next few days and forgot to mention it to anyone until tonight. My sister and mum were home with me for a movie night while my dad and my brothers stay at the cabin. I remembered the door situation when we were picking out horror movies to watch. I was sharing it as a creepy, almost funny story before my sister spoke up saying that the same night, an hour or so after they got home, the door was open again. The same door that was locked from the inside and not opened since earlier that night. My stomach dropped as I started shaking the second this was revealed. We first started trying to explain it away. Maybe she'd let Bosco out it and forgot to close it until we both recalled that we'd used the front door. Then we were trying to justify a reason someone would break in to not steal anything and proceed to stay hours before leaving. Ultimately, I realised that I quite possibly locked someone in the house with me, then forced them to hide upstairs while I searched the second level of her house. Then this hypothetical person 
would be trapped up there, now knowing that this house that appears to be empty, with the rest of my family gone and all the lights off, was in fact not empty. And there was a dog who would bark if they showed themselves again, alerting me to their presence. Then, when I was in the basement and my sister was in the bathroom, they ran out the glass door, which is timed perfectly to when they found the door open once more, much wider than when I had found it, as though they were only in a hurry on the way out. Perhaps they left it open the first time for a quick escape, or to stop the loud sound of it meeting the door frame. Either way, it ties together too perfectly for me, too reasonably to brush it off. I know it's unlikely, especially with nothing missing. But in this small town, there have been many reports of break-ins, with nothing missing, vandalism, or just breaking and entering many, many times. So it's not as unlikely as it may be in a bigger city. I can't make sense of this, and I'm shaken up thinking of the possibility of someone being in the house with me while I was asleep, alone in the basement. There's a part of me that doesn't believe it, but I can't shake the too many coincidental things that tie this all together. My mum's dog, Punky, was a very sweet, loving dog. She was an ESA dog, but trained to be a service dog for PTSD before she lost her leg. I'd never seen her get aggressive with anyone in the entire 12 years she lived. She never growled or nipped anyone, and she had no sense of smell. She loved all animals and people, a real gentle giant among our little terriers at 60 pounds. What I'm getting at here was that her barking at someone and being aggressive was so wildly uncharacteristic that I only saw it once. At the time, I was 11, and I'm a female, and I was at home with my siblings, who are both younger than me. My then stepdad is at work, and my mum ran up to the gas station to grab a pack of cigarettes. It was only a mile or two away from us. For reference, we lived in a two-bedroom trailer in the middle of the woods on a dead-end road at the time, and you had to really make an effort to get down our road, find our house, navigate down our rickety driveway, and to the front door. I'm sitting at the computer having a grand time watching YouTube videos when all of a sudden all of our dogs, about two Boston Terriers and one Chihuahua, perk up, bark a few times and start investigating down the hall. My siblings were napping in the bedroom at the end of the hall at the time, so I figure they just stirred and scared the dogs. But then Punky sits up suddenly, stands up on the couch and puffs her chest out. Her ears are perked up her fur standing on end, her tail straight up, and then she barks loudly. I mean, the bark booms through the living room and echoes around, and all of a sudden, she lunges off the couch and goes tearing down the hallway. I'm already on edge because I don't think I've heard her bark, ever. She's a Basenji mix, so her bark is more of a baying sound. But this was a big, loud, alert bark. I stand up and go to look down the hallway ready to fight off what I'm assuming is a shadow monster in the hallway based on how the dogs are acting. But then I hear it. Three knocks at the door. We didn't get visitors because of how weird our house was location-wise. So my 11-year-old mind had no clue what to do here. The only people who showed up were family and they didn't knock. So I slowly walked towards the door. The knock drew the attention of the dogs and they came running back down the hallway, all except for Punky, and I felt better with our three yappy dogs in the room with me, even if they were all the size of New York City sewer rats. I open the door just a bit, and standing on our porch is the sketchiest man I think I've ever seen. I can still picture him perfectly. He was a really thin, taller man with dark hair and a sunken face, bags under his eyes, and this half-managed hair, sort of like he just gave it a quick brush and then figured... Yeah, it's good enough. Everything about him seemed just a little too thin, a little too shallow. And his clothes were all off too. They were nice, but fake nice, you know. Like a clean, newer looking t-shirt and new jeans. But he had what looked like a suit jacket on. All of his clothes were dark too. Despite the fact that it was summer, in Texas. And the weather was definitely into the hundreds that day. He also had this plain, unlabeled bottle in his hand. 
It looked like the label had been covered up and taped over. I stare up at him in confusion because I definitely don't know this man and I ask him what he wants. He smiles at me in this way that's way too fake, like this exaggerated and forced grin. And he spoke in the same voice retail workers do. Hey there, kiddo, I'm trying to sell this here carpet cleaner. And he shakes the bottle at me. Mind if I come in to show you how good it works? Alarms are going off in my head because he just seemed so off. Looking back with an adult perspective, the fact that he didn't even ask if my parents were home is unnerving because he probably knew they weren't and that's why he was here in the first place. I should have told him to get off our property that I have to go get my mum or something. But I didn't. Instead, I just shook my head and said, No, we don't have carpet. Well, it works on other things. And he took a big step towards the door and shook the bottle at me. I start to freak out and think to close the door. But the thing is, our front door didn't even lock. Small town, you know, hard to access home. We never needed a lock. So that's basically useless. I'm sure there's something very wrong about to happen and I'm terrified as I think about what to do in the few seconds I think I have before it does happen. When all of a sudden, I hear it. Punky had crept up from the hallway, lowered towards the ground with her teeth barred and snarling like she was feral. She had slobber just dripping from her mouth. Her ears were down and she was ready to pounce. The guy hears it too and as I look towards Punky, She tries to lunge past me and I just barely catch her with my leg as she tries her hardest to duck past me and attack this guy. He freaks out and runs off the porch without another word, booking it down the driveway as I let Punky out along with the rest of our dogs and they start chasing him. Our small dogs chase him down the driveway and stop about halfway, barking and jumping about. But Punky stops just on the porch and watches him with her ears perked just staring in the distance until he disappears. I swear I saw someone join up with him running when he got onto the road. The second he disappeared, Punky's entire body language changed and she went back to being the sweet dog I knew. No barking or growling, just laying around, mouth and throat covered in slobber still. I realise my siblings are still down the hall. I run down to check on them and when I get to the bedroom, my siblings were sleeping soundly still but the bedroom window was wide open. The curtains pushed all to one side and the items on the dresser in front of the window all shoved around. Someone had tried to climb through the window, no doubt in my mind about it. From what I can gather, the bedroom window was visible from the couch where Punky was sleeping. So I think somebody was trying to climb through the window before Punky went after them and scared them off and the man at the door was meant to distract me they definitely didn't expect Punky, a bigger dog, because most of the time she was in with my mum, while our small dogs were the ones that saw public eye more often. I don't know what they intended to do, but after my mum got home, she took all of us to my aunt's house, and on our way there, we saw the men walking up someone else's driveway. Men, plural, because we watched a second one split off to wait by the road. So, to the two men apparently going door-to-door to to sell their unlabeled carpet cleaner, I'd really rather not meet again.